we're gonna get into start the whole planning process of your day. If you're thinking about planning a trip and, and you think about my plan at the morning of, you're way too late. You know, then you're just like basically just chasing dreams. But the planning should start days in advance, looking at the weather, what has it affected to the area that I'm gonna fish? Because Mother Nature's gonna dish out just a whole bunch of nasty stuff. Sometimes she's pleasant, but sometimes not. But so the first thing you gotta do is look at the weather, which we'll get a little later, but what I'd really like to do is gonna be looking at the overall area that we're gonna start fishing. So the way my brain works is to make sure you have some type of hard copy of a map. This map right here, whatever is the big body of water, big river system around the Great Lakes, breaks it down so you can visually look at it days before to get a game plan in advance. This is for the winds and conditions, this is where I'm gonna go. And then once you get on the water, you can correlate with GPS units. These are gonna be the same. It doesn't have to be as sophisticated as this. I've got four units on my boat. Some we can scroll in, we can scroll out to get a bigger view of it. But you could also get apps on your phone to look at the same GPS thing. So it doesn't have to be so sophisticated, but it does help you in going that way. So, you know, after the research, you sort of get a little bit of idea where you're going, that, you know, it's all planned. Then you're gonna to have to start thinking about choosing the right area. So Mother Nature's gonna sometimes dictate where we're gonna be. Like today, it's super, super windy, and we're gonna to have to deal with a lot of adverse conditions. So the launch site you pick, think about where you're gonna launch. Are you gonna to have to fight the winds? How it's gonna be when I get out there? How about getting back to the dock at the end of the day? So launch sites are pretty critical. So on a bigger boat like my, my mine, it's probably not as crucial as it'd be if like, this course, you could use a kayak, you could use a paddleboard. If you really want, there's launch areas and stuff like we're here back here. You can wade the shoreline with waders and wet wade in the summer too to attack these big waters too. So it's, it's pretty cool. But the main concern is going to be the weather. This weather is probably the key bullet point of being successful is being able to predict it. Today's a classic day. We've got a big warm front coming in and it'd just be like a saltwater Florida trip. We're gonna get the heat build up and sometimes this afternoon going into early evening, we're gonna get our butts handed to us with thunderstorms. So it's a good idea to get out in front of the storms, make sure you're always checking your weather apps to just make sure your safety is the main thing. Fish really bite just before the storm, but don't push your luck. But the main thing is the direction and the velocity of the wind. Is fly anglers, we have multiple challenges in big water from salt water to fresh water. And these challenges are is fighting the wind with our cast like today we'll have. It is the velocity sometimes once it gets up over 15 miles an hour like it is today, approaching 2025, it's gonna get challenged today, but there's ways that we can really like adapt and still make it a successful day. On bigger bodies of water and Lake Erie right here, for example, it's 51 miles across. So, it's gonna have a chance for the wind velocity to build big waves. So today we're gonna to pick a safer harbor, we're gonna go, we don't have to fight out there in five to eight foot waves, but even on a big inland lake impoundment uh, that might be close to your venue, your, you know, where you'd call you know, base camp, it's gonna be one of those things where it's like, man, I can't fish that side of the lake, it's just too nasty. Um, my rule of thumb is a pretty cool joke is that when you're scared to be out there, that's when the fish bite waves and action and just rocking around, it's hard to cast, but the fish's guard is not as much as if it was flat calm out. So sometimes if you feel safe, go ahead and push that envelope. I push it right to the right to the edge. You know, waves coming over the boat. It's hard to cast, but the fishing is really good. The next is that I think the key bullet point to weather is gonna be moving water. When water is still, envision fresh water like still no tide. Well, we have moving water all the time on the Great Lakes and on big water. This moving water is when fish are active. So if we can find moving water from current or wind direction, water being pushed by the wind in Mother Nature, you're gonna find yourself way more successful. If the wind's not too, too rough, you're gonna find that the windward shoreline where the wind's beating on it that structure is gonna be way more effective than the place that you really wanna go fishing, where it's protected on the lee side. So play around with that a little bit, but that moving water, even if it's a river mouth or creek mouth coming out into a big impoundment or on Lake Erie here, we're gonna have way more success. 
So on top of the moving water, you're gonna have a natural effect on the Great Lakes. And a lot of anglers are not sort of aware of this. It's what's called the littoral drift. So the five Great Lakes and Lake St. Clair is the six Great Lakes, and it starts way up north in Lake Superior, and it eventually worked its way through the Great Lakes, this current, and it works its way down into Lake Erie, then eventually keeps working east until it goes into the Niagara River. But naturally, on these lakes, there's gonna be a current. For, for instance, on Lake Erie here, we have a natural current that goes from the west to the east all the time. So if it's a flat water combination day where there's really not much moving, you can always count on a little bit of current naturally moving towards the ocean on St. Lawrence Seaway. So I set myself up on the western side of structures. So anytime you might have a natural current moving, like say you have an impoundment with a river start to finish at the top of the lake to the bottom of the lake, there's gonna be some movement of water and you're always better off to fish the top ends of moving water. If you have a lake that gets drawn down or up and down with some type of tailwater fishing situation, you're gonna really want to fish the upstream or the up current side for those slow days. Then there's a crazy situation we'll get into a little later with some maybe some pictorial visual uh, type of confirmation, but it's called the Asesh. Is with strong winds like today that's blowing right out of the south, super strong. This water right in front of us where you're seeing behind me, it's actually gonna lower a foot or more and push the water across the lake 50 miles and it's gonna raise on the other end of the lake. It's called a seiche. It's gonna work, rock this water back and forth. So those are things that happen even on small lakes, but on a smaller magnitude that always comes into effect. And then the last but not the least is gonna be water clarity. That is gonna be one of the major mountains that we need to find a vehicle to overcome is water visibility. As a fly angler, we don't have the sense of vibration. We don't have all that. We've got great colors. We've got synthetic patterns, but the, they have to see the fly. Well, we have rattles and things, but so I always try to position myself where there's water clear enough for the fish to see the fly. Moving on, let, let's chit chat a little bit about resources and aids that are, is another great way to do your homework and planning. Um, one is gonna be apps that you can apply on your home phone, um, or it can be on your home computer, it could be on your phone, but the Windy app and iWind Surf apps are really critical for you to get the information during the day, even the evening, the night before. It keeps you abreast of the wind, but it also gives you some really good intel of really like where to go fishing and where's gonna be the best places to go fishing. And then of course you can go to the NOAA sites, which gonna give you the storms, the weathers, it's also gonna give you near and offshore wind predictions for the day. So that's something I monitor all the time. Really, really super simple to do, but it keeps you safe, but it also keeps you super, super fishy for the day. Keeps you on those fish all day.